Hey everyone, it's me Gavin and welcome back to my XP. Today I want to talk to you guys about my experience with Xenoblade Chronicles, which initially came out on the Nintendo Wii. However, I will be talking about the Nintendo Switch version, aka the Definitive Edition. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So Xenoblade Chronicles for me was one of those games that I didn't really have any prior knowledge of. I didn't like hear anything about this game, I didn't see any advertising, nothing, because it wasn't initially meant to come out in North America. I didn't have any knowledge of Operation Rainfall or Downpour or any of those events that were supposed to like bring over these three JRPG titles to North America. Um, all I knew is that I just wanted a big RPG on Nintendo Wii. I was a very late adopter of the Nintendo Wii, and when I ended up getting the console, all I could think of myself was just like, is there actually going to be any like big RPGs on this console? Because I got to play a little bit of like Crystal Chronicles, and I was kind of like, eh, I want something a little more fulfilling. Um, so I ended up like looking around online to see if anybody had any recommendations, and then I eventually stumbled upon a lot of articles talking about Xenoblade Chronicles and ba Pandora's Tower, and just to see like how they were going to end up bringing those over to North America if they could get it. And then, lo and behold, it was that late into Operation Rainfall and everything that the following week, Xenoblade Chronicles was released in North America, so I was like, oh, awesome. <laughs> I didn't have to wait as long as everybody else, sorry. But anyways, um, I ended up picking up Xenoblade Chronicles and trying it out, and then immediately all I could say to myself was just like, wow, this is exactly what I was looking for. A large-scale RPG that I can actually enjoy. So, when I first got into the game, I remember just thinking to myself, like, okay, this Dunman character seems really cool, like, I, I can't wait to play as him, not realizing that that was not the main character. But, the way that the story was set up, it was really awesome, I absolutely love the intro sequence, and just, like, how everything just shows you the gigantic scale of these two titans, because when you're initially presented with that premise of, you know... Uh, the world pretty much takes place on these two titans that are just frozen in time because they were in a battle, the Mechonis and the Bionis. Um, it kind of makes you wonder, like, okay, exactly how big can this game be? Um, but then you get that shot at the beginning where everything starts zooming out and you're just like, okay, this is going to be gigantic. Um, but anyways, you get to play as Shulk and you get to meet Ryan and Fiora and everybody at the beginning of the game. And it was really nice to actually just see how, like, everything started out it was just a very slow pace at the beginning and then everything like is really really good and ramped up towards like the ending of this game without going into spoilers and everything i will say that you know the pacing is perfect with this game and there's a lot of like area for you to cover so the first thing i want to get into pretty much is like the battle in this game and i know the battle system is a little bit different for a lot of people but for me at this time it was something that I was very familiar with. It's just pretty much like a global cooldown type battle system from like MMORPGs. Which again, I was very familiar with, so I was really, really psyched to see that this was actually in a single player standalone title. And it was awesome because <laughs> this is the type of like RPG that I had been playing up to this point. So I ended up getting into battle and really enjoying that and figuring out the systems. Um, a lot of this was like positional based as well for some abilities, like you do more damage or activate different effects based upon if you were standing on like the side of the opponent or on the rear of the opponent. And you also had the ability to go in and like upgrade your abilities and just make them stronger as well, which was really cool and you know lower like the cooldown and stuff like that. So it was really nice to actually see that level of like uh, upgradability and customizability, I guess, for your characters as well. But I remember getting really into the battle system and just seeing like, you know, you'd go into the field, you'd have your standard like enemies, and then all of a sudden you look over to your left, your right, and there'd be an enemy that was like vastly over leveled. And you're just like, okay, I've got to stay clear of that thing or else I'm going to get completely owned. Um, but I love that. I love that it was very familiar to anybody that had played MMOs at the time because it was something that was very common in standard MMOs for that time. But it was nice to actually see, like I said, more of a offline MMO style RPG be a standalone title on a console. So I love the battle. Absolutely love the battle system in Xenoblade Chronicles and the world. The world is probably the next thing I want to talk about. Again, like I said, you, you don't understand just how big this game is until you actually get in to play it. And I mean, some of these maps are gigantic. 
I mean, there's a lot of exploration that can be done in this game. It's probably some of the bigger maps and and anything uh, that I've played up to that point. It's just like, it's hard to put into words how grand the scale is of these two titans. Um, it, it's gigantic, and, and it really makes you wonder how they ended up fitting all of this, like, data onto a single DVD disc for Nintendo Switch, right? Like, how did they end up pulling off a game this gigantic for a single disc? Like, it's just, it's mind-boggling to me. But the world itself is stunning. There's a lot of, like, beautiful locations, and there's a lot of, like, hidden things throughout the entirety of this, like, world. Um, and, you know, I remember, like, playing through the, ver the very beginning portion of the game and just being like, I can't believe this is just Bionis. Like, you know, now I eventually have to go over to Makana's and explore that Titan as well. Like, I just... It was mind-boggling to see how gigantic this world was. But I gotta say that, like, I never ever felt bored and the locations were varied and it was just, like, always something new being thrown at you that was pleasing to your eye. Um, I absolutely love the world of this game as well. The music, which I did not know at the time as well, um, because I, I just didn't pay attention to those things back then. Um, I, I found the music was incredible and I couldn't understand or, like, really, like, put my finger on why this music was so good. Until eventually I, like, realized who a lot of the composers were. And one of those composers just happened to be one of my favorite composers for any JRPG. And that was the same composer as Chrono Trigger. <laughs> so, immediately I was like, oh, okay, everything clicked now. It just made sense. Like, okay, this is why the music is fantastic in this game. Um, but I ju just remember, like, you know, hearing that very first time that uh, the song kicked in. As soon as you end up, like, fighting a unique monster and just being like, oh my god. This music is incredible. I love this. Um, but again, just going back and like listening to the entire soundtrack and just being like, oh, this is amazing. Everything is just so well put together. I understand why a lot of people consider Xenoblade Chronicles to be probably their favorite RPG of all time because it is really that good. And if you haven't experienced it, then I would honestly recommend that anybody go ahead and pick up the Definitive Edition if you have Nintendo Switch. Um, if you don't, if you have a Nintendo Wii, find some way to get your hands on a copy of this game. It is worth experiencing on both consoles. Um, however, I would highly recommend the Definitive Edition. And there are main reasons for that, which I'm going to get into now. Um, there have been a lot of different like changes and updates to the Definitive Edition. Um, I mean, from the visuals alone, it's incredible. You see a lot more detail with the characters' faces and just the world and everything is so nice to actually see this game realized in high definition, which is something that the Wii console didn't really have like the capabilities to do. So it's nice to actually get to re-experience this world like in the bright, vibrant like definition and graphics that it was like intended. So it's just amazing to actually see that um, now in 2020 and just like, ugh. I can't get over how good this game holds up right now. Uh, I know it's not like akin to like, you know, Final Fantasy VII Remake or anything on that graphical scale, but for what it is, it is fantastic and very pleasing to look at. Um, if you've played Xenoblade Chronicles 2, then you'll have absolutely no issue with how this game looks. And that's the big thing about Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is that even if you've played Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you're immediately rewarded off the hop just because you have the save file for that on your Nintendo Switch, and they start you off with 100,000 gold, um, which is fantastic. Uh, just, just, again, a nod to the fans of the series. And also with this game, you know, they implemented a, uh, like, glamour-type system, I guess, if you want to call that, or a fashion system where... If you don't like the look of the clothes or the equipment that you equip on your character, you can just go into this system and equip, the, you know, the, the style of clothing that you want your character to uh, appear to wear anyways. Because with this game, is something that I very much appreciate in terms of the equipment, and that's whatever you equip that's different looks different and is reflected upon your character. So if you equip a different weapon, it's shown. If you equip a different helmet, it's shown. If you equip a different chest piece, it's shown. So I love that. I love that it's absolutely reflected. However, there are some gear pieces that just really don't mix and match as well as they should based upon their stats. Um, so the fashion system is a very welcome thing in addition to this game that it is really nice that you can still have your characters look good <laughs> while also still retaining the best stats that you can for that character. 
Um, again, that's a really welcome addition. And then also they added in a, uh, a theater where you can go back and rewatch the cutscenes, which is very welcome. Um, and it's awesome because sometimes, you know, you just want to play through the game, you're really into it. Say if you accidentally hit a button or something and you just end up skipping the cutscene, you can go back and watch it now. Or even if you just want to go and show your uh, friends or whatever, hey, this scene is awesome in this game and you just kind of want to get them into it, you can go and show them that cutscene, no problem, in that theater. Uh, also, they fix the questing system where now you actually have indicators of where that quest is. <laughs> because that was my biggest gripe with the original game. Um, I spent so much time just like searching for things and not knowing where I should be. So finally, this is fixed in the Definitive Edition, and it's just fantastic, so welcome. But yeah, that's pretty much my experience with Xenoblade Chronicles. I would highly recommend you guys go out and play these games. It is by far one of the better JRPGs that has come out in recent years. And honestly, if I had to give it a rating, it would definitely be like a 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 type game for me. Fantastic. You can spend so much time playing this game. Um, I think my very first playthrough was like over 80 hours, so that'll give you an idea that I didn't even do like half of the side quests on this game because this game is just like teeming with stuff for you to do. Um, again, highly recommended to go out and play and get a hold of this game. I actually just recently gave away a copy of it on my Twitch stream, uh, so <laughs> that's just something that, you know, to be on the lookout for. If you guys are interested in any kind of giveaways or anything, be sure to go over and check out my Twitch channel twitch.tv forward slash gavin underscore vengeance and if you guys enjoyed this video if you guys want to leave a comment about uh you know how your own experience with xenoblade chronicles or anything you think i may have left out or whatever leave a comment in the comment below uh don't forget to please subscribe to the channel like the video share it with your friends uh follow me over on twitter as well at gavin vengeance very very easy to find me and yeah i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video i'm not sure exactly what it'll be i'm hoping it's going to be xenoblade chronicles too which I am currently playing through over on my Twitch channel. So we'll see. It all depends on how much further I get in this game or if I'm able to complete it anytime soon. But I will be back again, hopefully soon, with the next video. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.